Good morning. <laughs> so today we have our annual uh, slam poetry competition. Yeah. So just before we start this competition, let's set some ground rules for today. So we're going to have, um, I'm going to teach you some skills that we need to learn before the competition actually starts. So I'm going to teach you how to show your appreciation to the speakers today and just how to show your respect to them, you know, just pay attention to them. And so there's two things you can do when you want to show your appreciation during this competition. Alec is here to demonstrate these fine skills. Um, so the first skill, I would like to call it the snap your fingers. This is just, you know, um, an informal kind of way to show your respect for them, not clap them to disturb their speech. And the second thing is what I like to call the noise you make before you eat. Mmm. <laughs> so if you really like their speech, why not just give them a mmm? Just to show your appreciation, just to, you know, just cheer them on. And so, um, to announce, the, um, before we announce the competition, we actually have a group of people who's going to present to us today uh, who made their poems from a workshop yesterday uh, called The Uncharted. Um, you guys definitely heard of it. Um, and keep in mind, they only had 10 minutes to, pre uh, to prepare for their poems, so um, they're not actually part of the competition. They're just here to show their work to you guys. And without further ado, I'll just announce them and they'll present to us. So first of all, we have Beulah. Wait, 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 why are we clapping? Why are we clapping? Why are we clapping? What did you just learn? Yeah. Mm. Okay, so we were given a prompt. One of them was, um, what are some misconceptions about you? So, without further ado, what are some misconceptions about you? That list is heavy. I carry the weight as one of the only black girls in the room. It's important to make aware the trouble I go through as a minority in an international school. I come from a town where diversity was crowned, but now I live in a town where it seems to be frowned. As I walk from Lake Shore, I rarely see a face that looks like me anymore. Coarse hair, dark skin, their eyes attack me like it's a sin. Or exotic. Another African not worthy of being thought of. I look back on my first day, having high hopes, looking around to see who else is in my grade. Needless to say, I was afraid. I could count the black people on my fingers, one, two, Three, four, do I need to say more? The lack of representation has led to a rise in misconception pushed through our generation by the constant communication of the deception that is diversity. What are, <laughs> what are some misconceptions about me? It's what we allow it to be. Fantastic. That was great, that was great. I really appreciate it. I think I cried a little bit. Um, so second of all, we have um, Ivan, Ivan, Ivan. Let's go, let's go. Where are you? Oh, Ivan, what's up? Art today sucks. Whether it's music, poems, books, art today sucks because it's missing all that matters. And every single person wants to be an artist, but what separates an artist from a Pablo Picasso? What happened to those who ignored, moral law, or ignored laws and various moral flaws to fill a canvas with thoughts? Or those who went insane from impulses that shot through their brains, but today is just all done for fame. Doc Martin stopping the same issue, social issues over and over again. At the end of the day, we all go back to our suburban driveways because we all want to create, but we all want to be safe. So here's what I have in my head. Why don't we ditch safety pins? Roll back the censorship. 
Don't you dare repent. Reach into the darkness of what you really meant and follow the madness to the place where the real art went. So, last but not least, we have Matthew Wilk. Ooh, where are you, where are you? Huh? Oh, so he's not here. Uh, okay, fine, so we'll start the competition now. Um, so, let me just introduce our competitors today. We have, coming from middle school, Sterling Wu. Stand up, please, Sterling. Stand up, stand up. Just show them. Stand up, clap him in, clap him in. Let's go. And second, we have coming from upper two, Alyssa Gillard. Also coming from upper two, we have Salson. And last, but definitely not least, we have from our very own senior two, Anna Grant. So, without further ado, let's start the competition. Sterling, would you mind? Refugee Blues. Say this city has 10 million souls. Some are living in mansions, and some are living in holes. Yet there's no place for us, my dear. There's no place for us. Once we had a country, and we thought it fair. Look in the atlas, and you'll find it there. We cannot go there now, my dear. We cannot go there now. In the village churchyard, there grows an old yew. Every spring, it blossoms anew. Old passports can do that, my dear. Old passports can do that. The consul banged the table and said, If you've got no passport, you're officially dead. But we are still alive, my dear. We are still alive. Went to a committee. They offered me a chair. Asked me politely to return next year. But where shall we go today, my dear? Where shall we go today? Went to a public meeting. The speaker got up and said, If we let them in, they will steal our daily bread. He was talking of you and me, my dear. He was talking of you and me. Thought I heard the thunder rumbling in the sky. It was Hitler over Europe saying they must die. Oh, we were on his mind, my dear. We were on his mind. Saw a poodle in a jacket, fastened with a pin. Saw a door opened and a cat let in. But they weren't German Jews, my dear. They weren't German Jews. S went down the harbor and stood upon the quay. Saw the fish swimming as if they were free. Only ten feet away, my dear. Only ten feet away. Walked through a wood, saw the birds in the trees. They had no politicians and sang at their ease. They weren't the human race, my dear. They weren't the human race. Dreamed I saw a building with a thousand floors, a thousand windows, and a thousand doors. Not one of them belonged to us, my dear. Not one of them belonged to us. Stood upon a great plain in the falling snow, 10,000 soldiers march to and fro, looking for you and me, my dear, looking for you and me. Thank you. Damn. Damn. That was good. That was good. So, next up we have Alyssa. Hello? Okay. <laughs> Someone once told me that I'm lucky to be mixed. That I'm like a white woman with all the best features of a black woman. I start to wonder if blackness is only palatable enough for the white tongue if it's on the body of a mixed girl. 
if it's watered down enough to sit comfortably among the privileged, if it's light enough to get away with calling itself white when it's wanted to. I wonder if my blackness hides in the shadow that my body casts or if it's being kept there by everyone around me. My blackness fits in the back pocket of my white jeans because it needs to be easy to put away. I am told by my mother to leave my blackness at home when we visit my white grandparents' house because they're old-fashioned. But what I don't understand is that my blackness is only half of the man that she brought home to meet them. So I start to wonder if my blackness is something that can be fixed and his is already a lost cause. You don't know what it's like to be two people at the same time. To relate to everybody and nobody, to be everything and nothing, to be the punchline of the joke that is contradiction. I don't want to call myself white because I feel like that wipes away the meaning behind every bit of my identity, every kink in my curl and every tone on my skin, but I don't want to call myself a person of color because I feel like I'll be appropriating my own culture. I feel like I'll be infiltrating a space that wasn't meant for me. I feel foreign in a body that is my own. That is to say that my body is for other people more than it is for myself because other people have laid claim to what my body is more than I have. What they forget is that my body is just more than one thing. I live life as both my father and my mother. I live life as both the oppressed and the oppressor. I live life as both the slave and the master. I am the personification of your history textbook. I am the things that you are taught and the things that you will never learn. I am night and day because the darkness always gets outshined by the light. That is to say that my darkness and my blackness is always living in the shadow of her sister, whiteness. So I start to wonder, is mixed even the right word? Because my two halves could not feel farther apart. Thank you. Thank you, Alyssa. That was great. That was amazing. Jeez. Um, so up next, we have one sec. Sarsen. Hi everyone, this is a poem I wrote called Learning the ABCs. A is for the Arabic words that mimic the hues of smoke that dance across the sky, and B because a burning bush without God is just a fire, a fire that does not consume its darkness. Now E is for the embarrassment. I used to hate that my grandma wears a burqa, not because it not because it hit her, but because it made her a target F, my forehead to the floor being forced to my feet. G is because I was with her the first time a man told us to go back to your country, the same words we uttered when his ships invaded our eastern shores. H is because I became desperate to prove my humanity. But if I needed to prove to you that I'm human, then you are the one who is not human. I is for an ideological recalibration, and K for the killing of my inner Kaaba. L, M, N, O. O because God was no longer omnipotent or omnipresent. That had been stolen by the man and his words. P is for the prophets that then became prisoners painted on a wall. Long after you can no longer feel the word sting, you can still see it burn. Q is for Quranic verses that became translated into words I didn't want to understand. R, because then my grandmother would smile. Her reflected rays erased the razor-tipped words of hate that raised me. And S, because she reminded me of the subtle serenity in surahs, sermons, and silence singeing the sacrilegiousness that once seared my soul. Isn't it ironic how we can believe that we are created by God, but then recreate God in ourselves? I found God in my grandmother. T, because her tales are temples and her tears testimonies to the holy text. U, because I once believed that faith was a universal, unconscious ultimatum designed to manipulate our fear in the unforeseeable. V, because I now believe that faith are the values we choose to hold. W is for the watchtower where he waits and where his worshippers wonder if they could ever join him. But even watchtowers sink at the bite of three more letters, X, Y, Z. Thank you.
Thank you, Salson. We had an ama another amazing performance. So, last but definitely not least, we have Anna Grant. This is a poem I wrote called The Aleppo Address. Look, I know you don't want me here, and that my cries are falling on deaf ears, but you think I wanted to leave my home? My home, the only place I've ever known. Listen, I wish I could go back, but I'm here because my country's under attack. I wish you could empathize. Can you at least sympathize? I guess it's hard when you've got both your eyes closed. Close-minded, cold-hearted, no, don't get me started. Women and children brutally killed, their heads cut off, and their guts spilled. What? You don't like that image? You think I do? You think I like the carnage? I didn't come to take your jobs. I want peace. I didn't come to pillage and rob. I want justice. I didn't come to just sit here and sob. Because the truth is, the abuses and all the excuses are starting to make me rethink that maybe it isn't worth it. By the people. For the people. Now why don't I deserve it? Thank you. Thank you, Anna. So another round of applause for all our speakers today. Everyone did amazing. I think, I think that, actually just clap enough, just, just give me another round, just give me another round. I want another round. That was good, that was amazing. So that marks, one more, one, one more? Well, okay, fine, one more. Another one, another one. Okay, so. This marks the end of the competition and have a great word week, guys.